Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the end of the three day session for Uchiyama Roshi's memorial. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for the session participant uh, for your practice for the memorial of my teacher. Uh, it's so nice to see so many people in the Zendo without masks. <laughs> I hope this continues. Uh, you know, we didn't have so many people for almost two years. So uh, I feel this is unusual, but I hope this is usual. Uh, Hoko asked me to talk about Uchiyama Roshi because this is his uh, memorial. Uh, I wrote about, uh, briefly wrote about his life. Oops. Uh, in this book, Dogen's Genjo Koan, this is a collection of the uh, commentaries or Teisho on Genjo Kuan by three Japanese masters. One is Nishiari Bokusan. He was one of the most important uh, modern Soto Zen master. And the second is Shunju Suzuki the founder of uh, San Francisco Zen Center, and Uchiyama Roshi's. And uh, uh, the translation of uh, Uchiyama Roshi's Teisho on Genjo Kuan uh, is my translation. And as an introduction of Roshi's uh, Teisho on Genjo Kuan, I uh, wrote about his life not so long, only about 10 pages or so. Uh, but uh, if you are interested in uh, uh, his life, please read this ask at uh, this art, my article in this book. And uh, last month, uh, not last time I talked on opening the hand of thought, I introduced his teaching in this book, Boundless Vows and Endless Practice. This is published by uh, Dogen Institute. Uh, Today, I'd like to continue to talk, to talk on uh, this text, Opening the Hand of Thought. Uh, the final chapter of this text is uh, his, Uchiyamuroshi's final last lecture at Antaiji uh, before his retirement from Antaiji as the abbot. Uh, he, that was uh, or before that, uh, Uchiyamuro passed away in March 13th, so really this day, uh, in 1998. Uh, when he passed away, I was, I think I was in Portland, Oregon, because they had a uh, uh, Parinibana, Buddha's Parinibana session. They means uh, Dharma Rain Zen Center and Zen Community of Oregon uh, joined. They joined, had a joint session, and I was invited to give uh, lectures. And when I returned to, at the time I lived in Los Angeles, when I returned to my uh, place, from uh, Oregon, uh, I had a recorded uh, form from my friend Japan, in Japan, and it said Uchiyamuros passed away. So uh, I was not with him when uh, he passed away, but I'm, I felt, you know, it's fortunate that I was in the session. And uh, that friend uh, later wrote about uh, 
uh, his visit right on that day, on the night of his passing away, uh, almost midnight. <clears throat> the person lived in Kyoto, so not too far from where Uchamaroshi lived. And I wrote in this first uh, article that he wrote uh, when he uh, arrived Uchamaroshi residence. Uh, Uchamaroshi is already he, he dead. But he wrote it was the full moon day and the bright full moon light, moonlight uh, illuminate his uh, uh, death, you know, face. And it was really, really peaceful. Uh, he did, didn't look like he was dead, but he was alive and sleeping peacefully. And the person said, <clears throat> uh, full moon day on that, uh, around that time of the year, was in the lunar calendar, it was uh, uh, 15th of uh, February, the second month. You know, in the lunar calendar, 15th is always uh, full moon. Uh, so probably in the solar calendar, the day he passed away was full moon, uh, 15th day of uh, the second month. That was Buddha's uh, Parinibbana day. Uh, so, you know, he passed away like Buddha. Uh, and uh, so next year, 2023, is the fifth, uh, 25th anniversary of his uh, death. And uh, in this year, I was 50 years old. And uh, from 1997, I, I moved. Uh, from Minneapolis to Los Angeles as to study to work on uh, Soto Shu International Center. At the time, it was called uh, Education Center. Uh, <clears throat> so I was very busy uh, almost every month, uh, sometimes half a month. Uh, I was traveling to visit various Zen centers to share the teaching and practice. And often I read a session and gave lectures. Uh, so, uh, but my birthday was June 22nd. Uh, on, that, on my birthday of this year, I was in Kyoto uh, to do some you know, work in Japan. And on that day, I try not to have any schedule to be alone and, and quiet. And I could be alone. Uh, and on that day, you know, I became 50 years old. And I thought uh, two-third two -third of my uh, productive or creative life is over. So I'd like to work uh, for 25 more years for the Dharma and uh, retire. So after that was, you know, 25 years ago, I'm from next year. So uh, my life, that was five years before San Shinji was established. So at that time, not only working for the International Center, I was also working for fundraising to establish this uh, temple. So I was really uh, busy. I work for the center and also uh, San Shinzen community. So I decided I, I will retire in 23 when I become 75. 
and I, I really feel uh, fortunate that my plan uh, is almost accomplished. Uh, only one year and a few months left. So I hope <coughs> this goes well. <laughs> then next year, I will be very happy. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this, uh, the last chapter of this book is translation of Uchiyamuroshi's uh, final lecture at Antaiji. And the day after he gave this lecture, he left Antaiji for his new home. So, uh, you know, I have some more time, chances to give a talk on this text, and hopefully, I really hope I can complete this text. You know, this is a 239 lecture talk on this text and maybe it takes 10 more lectures. So I, I'll be happy if I uh, finish this, this text before uh, I, my retirement. But I'm not sure I may die before that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think in January, uh, I talked about uh, Uchiyamoroshi's a very basic understanding of what is Dharma and what is uh, Zazen <clears throat> using the analogy of uh, the crowd and uh, the great sky beyond the crowd. He said, when, he said, when uh, we draw a circle, with about seven inches diameter, uh, the atmosphere of the earth is only the uh, thickness of uh, this uh, line uh, of drawn by a pencil. And we are living in there. Uh, and we are uh, below the clouds. We have all different kind of climate uh, weathers. Sometimes we have a very beautiful blue sky, and sometimes we have uh, uh, peaceful white clouds moving around, and sometimes, uh, you know, uh, we have a dark clouds, and sometimes we have storm. So we have to uh, experience all that different kind of conditions underneath the clouds. But uh, he said, uh, <clears throat> beyond the clouds, uh, the sky is always blue and the sun is always shining. He, ex he said, this is the analogy of our Zazen. That is, our thinking is happening between the uh, ground and the clouds. We can live only in this, in this space. And of, we are uh, often uh, overwhelmed by the situation and our Cycle, our mind is up and down always. Sometimes we feel like a heavenly beings. Everything is uh, going well. And more often, uh, we feel we have some problems and uh, sometimes we have like a hell. So the conditions are changing and our mind is also changing. But he said in our Zazen, by letting go of thought, you know, even though the uh, changing of the weather is, we cannot stop the weather. 
to change. But beyond the uh, cloud, the sun is always shining and sky is always blue. That is the analogy of our thinking mind and uh, our Zazen when we let go of thought. That was uh, his basic kind of image of our Zazen practice. And this understand this, I think this is really a basis of his Uchiyamura's teaching. And his image of this uh, clouds and great sky came out of uh, one koan. And that is uh, Uchiyamura's uh, quote uh, in this book. Uh, page 141, if you want to check. He quote a dialogue between uh, Sekito Kisen, or Sekito is Shito in Chinese um, pronunciation. Shito or Sekito was a very important ancestor in our lineage who wrote uh, Sandokai, or uh, a merging of difference and unity. And uh, one of his disciples, whose name was Dao Wu, or Dog. I mean, I'm sorry, Dog. Uh, Dogo, Tenno Dogo. Uh, this is also, Dogo was also important uh, ancestors from his lineage. There are two of the five uh, Chinese Zen came out. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, the dialogue between Sekito and Dogo Tenno is as follows in page 141. A uh, disciple, Dogo, asked to his teacher, what is the essential meaning of Buddha Dharma? What is the essential meaning of Buddha Dharma? And Shito, Sekito replied, no gaining, no knowing. No gaining, no knowing is a translation of who Talk and Fu Chi. Talk Fu, both Fu is not, and Talk is to get or gain or attain, and Chi is to know. So, no gaining, no knowing is a literal translation. Then uh, Dogo, his disciple, asked again, can you say anything further? You know, no, not, knowing, not gaining, not knowing, uh, is kind of uh, abstract thing. So uh, that I think he, the student, want to say more kind of a uh, visible, uh, explanation. Then Sekito said, the expansive, expansive sky, the expan expansive sky does not obstruct the floating white clothes. So this is a source of Uchamaroshi's understanding of clouds and great sky. So Shito said, the expansing sky does not obstruct the floating white clouds. So clouds are coming and going, arising and perishing within this atmosphere. But a great sky or expansive sky uh, is actually ex 
including everything, even the earth and even the clouds, is the part of the, you know, expansive sky or the universe. So actually, white clouds and great sky are not uh, dichotomy. But white clouds, I mean, great sky include the atmosphere, the earth and atmosphere and clouds and human beings. So this is uh, the Uchamuroshi's understanding uh, of what Dharma and what our Dazen is. Uh, you know, in this section of this book, uh, he's talking about seven points of practice. Uh, he had been keeping in his mind while he was the abbot of Antaiji. And this is the first one, first of the seven uh, items. And the first one is study and practice the Buddha Dharma only for the sake of the Buddha Dharma, not for the sake of emotions or worldly ideas. And worldly idea uh, is uh, our thinking using uh, concept and logics. And there is uh, always dichotomies, good, bad, like, dislike. Uh, or uh, variable, you know, valueless, positive, negative. Those are <clears throat> uh, the uh, emotion or worldly ideas. And uh, Buddha Dharma uh, is this entire great sky. To uh, explain what this means, he quote this dialogue between Sekito and Dogo. Mm. Where is it? Uh, that is uh, the point. So. And as an explanation of this dialogue, let me read what Jamrosh says about this dialogue uh, in page 141. <clears throat> uh, second uh, paragraph, the wide expanse of the sky does not obstruct the passing clouds. It let them float freely. I think these words from the koan, this dialogue, fully express the meaning of Buddha Dharma. So this is a basis of his understanding of Buddha Dharma. Uh, at first, Shito or Sekito answered, no gaining, no knowing to the question, what is the essential meaning of Buddha Dharma? From looking at the Chinese, it might appear that he said, I don't know. Or he reject answering the question. But Uchamroj said, but that's not what he meant. He meant, no gaining, no knowing is Buddha Dharma. No gaining and no knowing. That means uh, good for nothing is Buddha Dharma. No gaining, no knowing is the attitude of refraining from all fabrication. So 
you know, this is the source of Uchiha Maharaj's expression, opening the hand of fraud. Uh, so we don't uh, grasp anything, uh, uh, you know, any part of what is going on, uh, coming and going in our mind as like a clouds. So gaining, no gaining, no knowing is the attitude of refraining from all fabrication in our mind. In other words, it means to be free from the ideas we make up in our head. So our thinking, conceptual thinking, is a clouds coming and going in our mind. And our practice is not to stop all those clouds uh, coming and going or from arising and perishing. From the idea we make up in our head, I call this opening the hand of thought. <clears throat> uh, this, uh, this strange expression, opening the hand of thought, is my translation of his Japanese expression, Omoi no te wanashi. Omo is thinking, and actually this Chinese character, So, is one of the five uh, scandals. Ju So Gyo, Shiki Ju So, so this is the third of the five scandals, usually translated as perception. And this is, according to Chiamuraj, this is how we grasp uh, uh, our thinking. And uh, no is of, and te is hand, and hanashi is a uh, release or release or ungrasp. So when he use this expression, omoi no tebanashi, he often uh, grasps his uh, reading glasses and uh, open his hand, then gra the grass fall down. So this is very uh, visible. We can see what is happening, even though we cannot see what is happening in our mind. But uh, this is very uh, unique expression even in Japanese. Uh, so this, you know, I translated this omoi no tebanashi as opening the hand of thought. And uh, American people uh, who are working with me on translation, uh, I translate this uh, 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 lecture uh, while I was in Barezendo in Massachusetts uh, <clears throat> because, uh, you know, I translated Fukanda Zengi as a kind of a material to, uh, for Dharma discussion. And after we finished Fukanda Zengi, we couldn't find a good text of uh, Dogen Zenji's. Uh, before Fukanda Zengi, we uh, read Zuimunki. On every Sundays, we have a discussion group and we read each section of Zuimunki for a few years. And when we finish it, uh, because I couldn't find any uh, translation of Dogen Zenji's writing at that time. That was about 40 years ago. You know, there's no, not so many translation of Dogen's. So I decided to translate Fukanda Zengi. 
that was the very basis, basic text of our Dazen practice in Dogen's lineage. Uh, and after we finished Fukanda Zengi, we didn't have uh, text. So uh, one of the members uh, who practiced with us at Varezendo uh, asked me to translate this final lecture because, you know, uh, only the seven points uh, were translated into English and uh, that translation was put into a frame and placed on the wall by the Zendo. But uh, they wanted to know what actually Uchiango said about those seven points. So they, one of them ask, asked me to translate uh, this uh, writing, you know, this lecture. That's why I translate this. So this was, uh, you know, when I translated this, I was still in my 20s. Uh, in a sense, I was creative, not in a good sense. But I, 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 I liked a kind of a making strange English expressions. And this is one of them. You know, this very literal translation and as English, this doesn't make any sense, I think. And this, uh, we already know what Uchiang was talking. Uh, usually this omoi no tebanashi is translated as a common English as letting go of thought. But I don't like the uh, English expression, letting go of thought. Uh, it's very, of course, it's understandable. But, you know, what Uchiang Roshi want to express using this word, you know, this is really a uh, unique expression even uh, in Japanese. So uh, I'd like to make something American people cannot understand. That's why, you know, then uh, they want to uh, know, to understand what this means. I think that is important. When we, we use letting go of thought, it's nothing special. People are not interested in what this means, but omoi no tebarashi is very unique expression, so people want to uh, know what this means. Uh, so I try to I leave this expression. But uh, my American friends, such as Tom Wright uh, and Arthur Braverman, those translate uh, Ucham Roshis and Saoki Roshis and Dogen Zens into, from Japanese to English. They didn't like this translation. They said, this is not English. I knew, <laughs> I knew this was not English. That is the point. Uh, so I, ask Tom to keep this expression only when we work together to make this book. Uh, I asked him to keep, uh, to maintain this expression only within this uh, chapter. Rest of this book, uh, you know, we use letting go of thought. Uh, that is why you know, this expression was uh, uh, still here in this book. But somehow, uh, you know, when we are ready to publish, you know, this book, uh, the editor of this book, uh, Jisho, Jisho Kariwana, <clears throat> uh, she was a professional editor of many Buddhist books. Uh, he, she, I'm sorry, she, Jisho, uh, picked up this expression as the title of this book. I was happy, but I don't think Tom was happy. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the uh, uh, origin of this title, Opening the Hand of Thought. And I think today, you know, many, even American people use this expression, Opening the Hand of Thought. I'm happy about that. So this is still alive. 
So, uh, omoi no tobanashi is really important in Uchiyama no Shi's uh, teaching. And he said, what, uh, what this means in the next paragraph. So, let me read next paragraph. When we think of something, we grasp it with, uh, with our mind, thinking mind. If we open the hand of thought, it drops away. So when we grab, grasp something, and yet when we ungrasp, open the hand, then it falls down. It drops away. This is Dogen Zenji's famous phrase, Shinjin Datsurak, dropping of body and mind. So, uh, in Uchiyamoroshi's understanding, this letting go of thought or opening the hand of thought is a kind of his uh, translation of, uh, open, of Shinjin Datsurak. Uh, dropping of body and mind. You know, this Shinjin Datsurak is actually most important, one of the most important expression in Dogen's teaching. He used this expression, Shin Jin Datsurak many times in his writings. Shin is body, and, and Jin or next Shin is mind. And that is to be released or another is to take off, like a taking off our a clothing. And lack is drop fall down. And uh, Dogen Zenji uh, discussed this about Shinjin Datsurak, this expression uh, with his teacher, Chinese teacher Tendo Nyojo in uh, his record of his conversation uh, with uh, Tendo Nyojo or Tienton Rujin uh, is in Ho Kyo Ki, one of his, his writings. And uh, Dogen and Nyojo discussed about uh, Shinjin Datsurak uh, three or four times. And original person who used this expression was Nyojo, not Dogen but his teacher, Rujin, and he said, practice Zen. Practice Zen is San, San Zen. San is to meet, uh, like a, to meet with the teacher. You know, uh, in Rinzai, you know, they had the practice of Dok San. That is a face-to-face uh, -face interview between teacher and student. It's called Dok San. And that San is the same San to meet with teacher and study. But when uh, Nyojo, Rujin, used this Dok San Zen, it's not about uh, to meet with teacher, but to meet with them. That is practice then. And he said, San Zen is Shinjin that's like dropping of body and mind. Then uh, Dogen asked, what is Shinjin that's like? And Nyojo said, Shinjin that's like dropping of body and mind is Zazen. You know, sometimes this expression was uh, understood as the result of Zazen or something accomplished 
through practice of Zazen that is called uh, enlightenment, wasatori. But uh, the original person of, uh, who used this expression said, this dropping of body and mind is Zazen. And he said, he continued, when we sit, we just sit and dropping of body and mind, uh, we are released from five desires and five coverings. Five desires are uh, when you know the six sense organs like eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, and mind, and the six object of sense organs, that is like a, a color, sound, and a object of mind. When uh, these six sense organs encounter with six uh, object, then uh, something happened. That is called six consciousness. So when I encounter with something with color and shape, uh, through I conscious, I uh, through I other sense organ, we see uh, we have I consciousness. And uh, five sense, five desires means when we meet all of them, we have within as a consciousness, we have some desires. We like or dislike or something important and not important. Uh, it is said of five desires because this object of mind is not something outside, but object of mind is a part of mind. So it's not really outside, but within our mind, we think about uh, something happened in our mind, such as a memory or idea or future plan. Those are object of mind. And we uh, have, you know, in intercourse between this and this. So all this consciousness or result of consciousness become the object of mind through the process of, you know, uh, perception, uh, sensation, perception, formation, and consciousness. For Dogen, uh, not to Dogen, but Nojo said is when we sit uh, and dropping of body and mind, we practice body, dropping of body and mind, uh, <clears throat> we are released from, you know, these uh, interaction or we, based on our karma, karma means our past experiences, we have some kind of, uh, what is the word? Uh, our, we are bound with certain things. We even, without thinking, uh, we think we see something we had a bad experience in the past, we auto almost automatically think this is bad. I don't like this. But when we, we encounter something, uh, you know, like a, a wealth or a fame or a, a fame, a good position, we almost automatically want to get them. Those are desires. But when we just sit and dropping of body and mind, we are released of that kind of, uh, you know, what we call 
like a, uh, we are like a fish and we are uh, hooked and we are you know taken so that is the way our life become uh, suffering so suffering uh, is not the only mean uh, to be to be in the you know uh, you know uh, painful realms such as hell the realm of his hell uh, animals and uh, uh, what is another one I forget hungry ghost thank you and uh, next uh, another third are good realms in samsara but all this all these these six six realms of samsara are suffering uh, because they are, uh, you know, like a heavenly beings, we feel suffer if we are not there. If there, if this where we live is only hell, there's no uh, idea or concept of heaven that is much better place. Then we don't think this is bad or this is negative. But because of the relativity we can compare uh, with some better places and we feel this is not good anyway that is what dropping of body and mind means according to the original person Tento Nyojo uh, said and this is, I think, this is in accordance with what Buddha taught, Shakyamuni Buddha taught when he talks about the uh, teaching of dependent origination. You know, he said, uh, I, during uh, Genzoe, I sometimes introduce uh, the Pali Sutta named six set of six six set of six six means six sense organs six object of sense organs and uh, six consciousness and when those three are there we have a contact or a soku and uh, when we have contact we have sensation that is due and uh, we have perception this is so and uh, <clears throat> gyo and shiki and uh, the most complete version of teaching of drop, uh, depending uh, dependent origination is 12 links of causation but uh, that is a final version of dependent origination uh, there are many different variations of same kind of teaching and this six a set of six is one of them and another one is the teaching i introduced uh, in the uh, sutta named honey bowl and after perception there are two ways one is after so uh, we have i I is craving or desire or tanha in Pali or Sanskrit. Uh, so, uh, sokuju, I and shu. Uh, shu is uh, attachment. 
or clinging. And another that that is one um, kind of a process, one, one side of this process. And another side is after Ju, when we have uh, so uh, perception, we have thinking. Uh, thinking, I don't want to write. Thinking and uh, in the process of, process of thinking, uh, prapancha is there. We have prapancha. Prapancha is uh, in Japanese called keron. That is uh, in sans in English that is called a uh, conceptual proliferation. That is, uh, you know, we make different concept, and when uh, concept is fixed, uh, you know, we think those concepts are actually there. And uh, there is uh, something positive or negative concept. So after concept, conceptual proliferation, we have a uh, vikarpa. That is uh, the, the, the vikarpa in English, like a false discrimination. So one process is ab is about uh, desire and attachment. Another one is kind of intellectual uh, process, thinking and uh, conceptualization and uh, judgment based on those concepts. And uh, in Japanese Buddhism, we call this size Jo, more like a uh, emotion. And this size is called Shiki. In, interaction and these two are always together so emotion and thought are always together that is how our mind works after we have contact and Shakyamuni Buddha said you know contact is a source cause of the difficulty, problems, or suffering we experience in our uh, daily lives. And Shakyamuni said, it's uh, possible to live without contact. Contact means contact between uh, subject and object. And that is in our uh, then he said there is a uh, in English translation of Pali uh, Stanipata said there is a state of uh, state of no perception no perception oh no uh, common per usual perception ordinary perception uh, and disordered perception without no perception. I mean, there are some perceptions. And without, without annihilation of perception. And I think that is what we do in our Zazen. That is opening the hand of thought or the thing of thought. So this teaching of dropping of body and mind and Uchiang Roshi's expression opening the hand of thought is connected with very kind of old traditional teaching of Shakyamuni. That is, we become uh, free from that process after contact. That is how we become free from, you know, this uh, dependent origination. Uh, and the result of this dependent origination is suffering or transmigration within six realms. So, uh, <clears throat> when uh, we 
read this book and uh, think about this expression, opening the hand of thought. Please uh, think, understand. This has a connection with Dogen's expression of dropping of body and mind and Shakyamuni's expression uh, or Shakyamuni's teaching, how we can be free from this clinging. Uh, it's already 11, 18, so do we have a ceremony after this? So uh, I think we need to finish now. Uh, I'll continue from here next uh, time. So we don't have time to, for question and answer. Is it okay? Thank you.